Today on Locked On Red Wings, the prospect tournament roster is out. Who to look forward to and who isn't there and why? Your Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. I'm a podcast producer for the daily JAWWJ News Radio podcast. Well, Scotty's a host over at Locked On Tigers, as well as a freelance journalist for the Detroit News. On today's episode, guys, we're going to be going over the Detroit Red Wings prospect tournament rosters. That was released on, I think, Thursday. Uh, but we saved it to today's episode as we had a few more player profiles to get through. And speaking of, uh, we'll finish out this episode kind of talking about Elmer Soderblom and Simon Edvinson. I guess kind of doing a player preview on them. The reason being is we've had quite a few people in our comments while we do these player previews asking about them. Uh, Soderblom spent 21 games with the Detroit Red Wings last season, almost losing his rookie status. Uh, and Simon Edvinson played nine games at the end and is coming off of an injury. And people just want to know what we think. Uh, if they have an opportunity to crack the lineup this year. So we'll get to that in segment two and segment three. Uh, but first, Scotty, how you doing, man? Doing pretty well, man. Got, uh, you know, we're recording this before the Tigers game. So that's a big series that I'll be doing. But I mean, besides that, I love the weather this weekend. It's I know that we fantastic. keep talking about the weather to like kick off shows. But like the little little crisper after it was done raining, obviously. Yeah. Hope everyone's safe. Um, but yeah, it was a little, little cooler. I, I love the fall. So yeah, got a like, little taste of that this weekend. I think we had six confirmed tornadoes from that storm yeah, on dude. Thursday night across Michigan. It's crazy. Scary. Just like the Red Wings prospect tournament roster. Absolutely crazy. That you was like the worst transition maybe <laughs> of all time. But yeah, let's talk about the Detroit Red Wings uh, prospect tournament roster. If I can make sure I share the right screen this time. Uh, there we go. God, I nailed it. And so I'll just read it for you guys. I know a lot of you guys watch us on YouTube, but for those of you who watch us on spot or listen to us on Spotify and other apps uh, at Ford, you got Riley Sawchuk, Nate Danielson, Carter Mazur, uh, Matthias Milovsky, Dean Lucas, Alexander Dosette, Emmett Finney, Cross Hannes, Amadeus Lombardi, Israel Mianscom, Mianscom, really taking a, taking nailed a lot on that one. Nick Sima, Elmer Soderblom, Jake Uberti, Marco Casper, and on defense you got Andrew Gibson, Antti Tuomisto, William Wallander, Connor Punnett, Finn Harding, Jack DeSouza, or Jackson DeSouza, Tanias, Tanias, Matherin, and then goaltenders you have Sebastian Kosa, Jan Bednar, and Lucas Matcha. Uh, I'm trying my best to pronounce some of those guys. I'm not familiar with everyone on here. Um, but most of these names that Scotty, we are very familiar with. Um, first thing that stands out to you, Scotty, when you look at this Detroit Red Wings prospect roster, what is it, man? Um, well, I mean, I think we'll we'll talk about one of the omissions here in a second. But I, I like the pool, and like this is a this is not like nothing. Like there's a there's several players last year who uh, started their kind of ascension to i mean like players like soderblom who we'll talk about later like started their campaign for making the roster on opening night in you know like this tournament and then obviously the preseason so uh th this is this is always it's always kind of fun too just because it's like the i don't know it's like the flag for like start of the season is kind of around the corner right like it's one of the first steps uh of like on ice activity towards opening night so that's kind of a cool I don't know, like milestone, I guess, to reach. But just as far as the roster, I, I, I really, I mean, it, there's a lot of the names we've been talking about, and and it's not just a bunch of players who are, you know, two, three, four years away. Like there, there's a lot of dudes on here who are either knocking on the door or players. I mean, literally like Marco Casper, who are going to get NHL time at some point this season, which is fun to see them get off to an early start this summer. Yeah, I mean, the first thing again not talking about the guys who aren't here because that jumped out to the jumped out to me as well as the guys who aren't here and we'll explain why some of them aren't um but like we're really excited to see like you said Marco Casper this is our first look at Nate Danielson uh cuz Nate Danielson is going to be at this tournament I'm really excited to see what the Red Wings ninth overall pick can do I mean this these tournaments really is like you you really can get an early tell 
of who's going to separate themselves from the pack. Like who's a legitimate like threat and who's just like a guy, like guys on ATOs, amateur tryouts who are, are trying to make a name for themselves. Like Bianca Batuka did last year and he did great. And he made it all the way to training camp and in the preseason before finally getting cut. Um, I'm really excited to see more cross Hannes. Uh, cross Hannes missed a lot of time last year due to injury, but before that was really doing well in the AHL and he, he killed it at last year's prospect tournament. So I hope he can do the same thing here. Um, I know a lot of people are excited about Alexander Doucette. He's kind of uh, been like a late bloomer. Prashant Iyer in particular has uh, mentioned that he's excited for Doucette because he's kind of, like I said, a late bloomer. Um, and then Amadeus Lombardi and Carter Mazur, guys who uh, Carter Mazur wasn't at last year's prospect tournament because he was playing college, but he, since he made the decision to turn pro, this is the first time we're going to actually see Carter Mazur like with the exception of the few games he played at the end of last season with the Griffins, like there's a lot of guys that we, who are highly touted prospects who we're really only going to be seeing for like the first time. I, I don't think Marco Casper was at last year's prospects tournament because he was in Sweden. So yeah. there's so many of these guys like we're finally getting to see. And this prospects tournament might be even this prospects roster is probably more loaded than it was last year, even without a guy like Simon Edvinson out there. Yeah, I'd agree with you. Uh, I, I think that it's definitely, Maybe it doesn't have the uh, – well, I mean, it kind of does. I was going to say maybe it doesn't have the top-end talent, but it's deeper. But, like, I mean, you know, who's to say that somebody like Casper isn't a, a top-end ta- – as much of a top-end talent as Edvinson is. So, um, yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I, I think that this is the uh, this is a, a better top-to-bottom roster. I'm super pumped to for all the reports and the, and the highlights that come out of it. I I'm glad Coase is there. Obviously, that's someone who like we want to be a big one more and more acclimated and face better and better competition. So that's super cool. Um, Wallander, obviously cool. You already talked about some of the forwards. Yeah, man, I'm 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 really excited. Uh, I'm really excited. And yeah, shout out Carter Mazer, man. And, and there is a little bit of obviously Simon Edvinson isn't there. He's still recovering from his injury. Um, yeah, a few omissions, surgery rather sure. his offseason surgery. Uh, there's no Albert Johansson and that one, I actually, and if one of you guys in the comments knows why he's not there, I'd love to know because guys like Anton Johansson, it makes sense. Isn't there because he's playing over in Sweden, you know, there's a, and, uh, you know, some of the college guys don't show up like Carter Mazur wasn't there last year. Cause he's playing college hockey because college athletes and the Swedish, uh, athletes already are in preseason or are not allowed to play. So those guys make sense. So like, I don't know why Albert Johansson isn't here because he played the Griffins last year. I know he was hurt at the end of last season, but is this a carryover from that? I'm not sure. If one of you guys knows in the comments, please let me know. I tried looking it up and I couldn't find the answer. So I'm turning to the turning to the listeners for this one. Yeah, that, um, that my my presumption was uh, was they were just being precautious because of the injury that ended last season. But I, I have, am not a doctor and have no clue what his timetable is or, or was. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's my, uh, that's my best assumption, but I, uh, I haven't seen anything as to why he isn't, but obviously that's also why Alexander or, uh, Axel, I don't know why I said Alexander Axel Sandin Pelica isn't at this tournament cause he's playing over in Sweden. Um, yeah. so honestly the, the Ford core looks really stacked. I mean, you're having Elmer Soderbaum who played 21 games in the NHL last season going to the prospect tournament. I mean, that's just crazy that a guy who nearly lost his rookie status. Yeah. <laughs> is going to be playing in the prospects tournament and is going to be a year with more experience. Um, but the defensive core, honestly, you know, with the exception of William Wallander and maybe to Amisto, it looks kind of thin. So I don't know how much of a, and this is perfect time. Like I was saying, the perfect time for some of these guys to absolutely break out Scotty and, you know, prove what they can do. But I'm not sure any of these guys in the defensive core outside of Wallander are real threats to make NHL rosters in the near future. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, it, it, you know, each case is, is different, right? Like there are certainly a lot of guys on here who are, um, or at least several guys on here who are, and then there's plenty of guys on here who are like, are, are going to be nowhere close to the NHL this year. Right. Like, it, I mean, it, it really is just a case by case basis, but like I said at the beginning, I do like the fact that it is a good mix and it's not just all people, that are that are you know years away like last year was kind of like Edvinson and oh I guess Soderblom too and then a lot of people who you didn't really expect too much out of this I mean this roster has I don't know three 
maybe even four if you're feeling really good about yourself. People who are at a minimum like knocking on the door at the NHL level, like that's exciting. Yeah, and so it's going to be fun. Uh, there's four teams, obviously, at the tournament. It's a few weeks away here. Uh, Columbus, Dallas, Detroit, Toronto are in it. So it's going to be fun like it is every year. And uh, we're going to talk more in depth about Elmer Soderblom and Simon Edmondson in the coming segments here on Locked On Red Wings, doing a little bit of a player preview on them at the uh, request of you guys as listeners. I've seen a lot of comments about that. Uh, but first, Scotty, I got to talk to the people today. Let me get us back into our normal shots about yeah. FanDuel. Get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. And now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use and you can be on everything from spreads to player props and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to kick off the NFL season with an offer you don't want to miss. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Segment two, Locked On Red Wings podcast. Scotty, a lot of people have been in our comments asking us to do a player preview on Elmer Soderblom uh, because last year, obviously, he uh, made the roster out of camp. It was a huge surprise. He tore up with the Prospects Tournament. He tore it up at training camp. He tore it up in the preseason, played 21 games with the Detroit Red Wings before ultimately uh, proving that he wasn't quite ready. But in those 21 games of the Detroit Red Wings, he had five goals, three assists, eight points. He scored the very first goal of the NHL season for the Detroit Red Wings, the game winner against the Montreal Canadiens in that 3 nothing shutout. And, uh, you know, he started hot and then kind of tapered off. And it was ultimately, I believe, was scratched a couple times before getting sent down and then and Grand Rapids got hurt and didn't play a whole lot while he was there. So the question becomes with another year of and another off season of training under his belt, does he have an opportunity to crack the roster at the NHL level? Yeah. Well, I, I think this depends on, on some timing. I, I, I would say that on opening night, I would be surprised, but I would have also surprised last year when he made it on opening night. So it's certainly not impossible, and he's literally done it before in the last year. Um, so, like, we'll see. But this is this is going to have to be a, a whole different level of, like, prove it, right? Like, th this year's roster is deeper and better than last year's roster Without pretty comfortably at that, right? Like, not even close, to be honest. So... If, if what he did last year where he kind of ascended, but then you also have to remember there was a, a key injury to the forward core going into the season too, which opened up a spot for him as well. So, I mean, there's definitely, I, I'm, I'm going to give everybody somewhat of a fighter's chance. They, this team seems to be really like, if you prove it, it it's going to happen. And we just talked about somebody like, uh, like, Valeno, who is making less than nine hundred thousand dollars this year, like I, I think if it, there, there is as much as this roster is deeper, there are still places which I think the Wings are comfortable going. Okay, well, this person did really well or is doing really well, and it's November or December. We're we're gonna make this switch again. Opening night, I feel like is pretty far fetched, but again, twelve months ago was also far fetched to me. Um, so I, I do expect Soderblom to play in a winged wheel at some point this season, an injury is going to happen. And I think that he's going to be one of the, uh, one of the, the early calls, one of the, maybe even the first call. I'm trying to think of like who else will be down in Grand Rapids and start off the year, but he might legitimately be the first call when a spot opens up at the NHL roster. Um, he's certainly going to be one of the first calls. So uh, I, I do expect him to play just uh, maybe not like super early in the season. I still think he has some stuff to work on. I'm super pumped to see him for the first time since the spring and, and, and last winter, right? And, and see him uh, to see if he actually has improved on, right? He needs to, to work a little bit on skating. He's so big, right? Like we talk about like Raymond getting knocked off the puck because he's so small. Soderblom can get knocked off the puck because he's so big. And uh, just the center of gravity is a little bit different. So he needs to work on that. But he has intangibles that nobody else, not only in, in the Red Wings organization has, but very few people in the entire NHL had, have being a forward that that's, that is that big. So 
Uh, everyone's super pumped to see him. I'm sure we'll see him at the NHL at some point. I just don't expect it super early on in the season. Yeah, I mean, I think he's in the unique position that guys like Valeno and Bergen were, you know, when they were on the cusp. They were always the guy who kind of got called up right as injuries started to happen but never could stick. Um, yeah. He's 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 right on the cusp, man, of being a full-time NHLer, and you've already kind of and laid eventually out. eventually they stuck. Like, oh, and eventually they stuck. Like, you're right. Like, it's not like he's going to be in that limbo phase forever, yeah. I mean, this is a guy who's a sixth-round pick. And has moved his way up the roster. We talked a lot about last year about how he's a unicorn, and he very much is a unicorn um, in his the, the, how soft his hands are for his size. Um, he he can be an absolute menace on the ice. The problem was, and you've again you've laid it out, is he, he his problems are related to how big he is. He's six foot eight. He's a giant, and guys who are that big tend to actually be pretty easy to knock off the puck at least early on in their NHL careers because of the fact that they've never played in a league before where players are as strong as they are. They've ever, always they've always been able to get by on their size alone. But So now he needs to put on a little bit of muscle and work on lowering his center of gravity, become a slightly better skater. But he's fine defensively. He's good, great in the offensive zone, especially down low in front of the net. And he's got soft hands. He's a good stick handler. If he can just work a little bit better on being stronger on his feet and better protecting the puck, you know, just things that you have to work on with – players of his size like if he can shore up those assets of himself he will be an absolute menace and i i he's just right there on the cusp and i do think that he's probably spent all off season yeah. working on those things i'm sure he's very well aware that those are kind of the drawbacks to his game as stands right now so i mean it's it's, it's only a matter of time i think with elmer soderblom but as you put it you know this is a deeper roster than ever before, and he probably would not have made the roster coming out of camp last year had it not been for a key injury going into the regular season. So, does he crack the lineup on opening night? No. But do I think we're going to see him throughout the season? I think so, yeah. I think guys like he and Matt Luff and Austin Zarnick are going to be the guys who are always going to be called up when injuries happen. And eventually, Soderblom will stick. I don't know if it's going to be at in this season at some point, uh, he'll stick full time like halfway through, or if it's going to be coming out of training camp next year. But it was clear after 21 games this last season, as exciting as it was starting out, he had some work to do. So we'll see how much progress he made going into season this year. For sure, I, I really do, and like I, I don't mean to just like keep harping on him. Like I know we're not talking about him, but like I, I don't think Joe Valeno has a super long leash. Like I don't think they're just going to let him like not produce as the four C for the entire season. Um, and uh, I think that if Soderblom has fixed those issues that they're trying to like see him improve on, and like you said, he obviously knows what he needs to work on. The wings, I'm, I'm sure I've told him a million times the things that he needs to work on. Um, it really would not shock me if, not that Soderblom's going to come up and, and play center like right away necessarily, but uh, it wouldn't shock me if if they if that was the move. Or, I mean, there there's... Like it's it's not again. Like I'm not just trying to like bring up Valeno every opportunity. Like there's plenty of other guys too that are still kind of in that bottom. Uh, we talked about Fisher. Like he might be the 13th skater. Like you know, forward some nights. Like there, there's there's opportunities for him to crack the lineup. This is not like the deepest roster in NHL history. Where if a a, a, a top prospect who is literally a unicorn is crushing it, that they're just not going to find ice time for him. So. Um, yeah, I, I, I think early on, probably not as season goes along, he'll get more and more opportunities. And obviously the biggest thing is just how well he's playing in GR. Uh, that's gonna, you know, if, if, if he's playing really well down there, then when he gets called up to fill in a spot for an injury, he has a better chance of sticking longer than just, you know, a week and then sent back down. I also am just really excited for him in general because, uh, this is a, a guy who I think could really thrive in this system. And the only reason I say that is because if you look at last year's team and in, in the first year of Newsy system, the player who was like the big body that stood in front of the net was fantastic all year. It didn't matter if it was Sonny before he got traded. It didn't matter if it was one of the the revolving door of players who it was after and and I and I think Soderblom has the hands and the athletic ability to be more than just like the big body in front of the net mm -hmm. but I mean whoever was in that role thrived like big time thrived for the Red Wings no matter how 
touted they were before that that last season. And uh, I think him filling that role could lead to, because he is so skilled with his hands at that size, uh, really could lead to a lot of success. So I'm very, very excited still about Soder Blom, and I think he fits this system super well. Even if it's like a bottom six winger, but like power play one, power play two, right. that kind of niche. Again, unicorn in that situation. A guy that big with those good of hands, he can be such a net front threat. And that's really where a lot of his success came this last year was the net front presence. So uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about Simon Edvinson. We should probably do a Marco Casper one at some point, uh, probably Wednesday's episode uh, or Friday. I think we're planning on a crossover coming up here shortly. So we'll, we'll keep you guys in touch with that one. Uh, but we'll take a quick break. And when we come back, segment three, Simon Edmondson. Stay tuned. Locked on Red Wings. Segment three, Locked on Red Wings podcast. Scotty. Brian. Simon Edmondson played nine games at the Detroit Red Wings last year. Uh, just just barely stopping the, the the clock from starting. You think that was intentional? <laughs> uh, I think it was just pure coincidence. I don't think they would ever plan that out. <laughs> I think uh, pure coincidence. So his his ELC slid, and he is restarted this year. But the problem is he had off-season shoulder surgery, I believe, and his timeline could be anywhere from October to November in his return. And we haven't really heard any updates besides like it's progressing along as should. And so, but that doesn't give us an indication of like sooner rather than later. So I think for our purposes, we should probably assume like the maximum length, right. And go with November. And which means that he misses prospects tournament. He misses training camp. He misses preseason. He misses the start of the season. So while Edvinson was a guy like Simon, uh, Elmer Soderblom, who was on the cusp of being ready for the NHL, he's starting, you know, a step behind the rest of the players going into the season. And while he is probably the closest to being NHL ready, along with El Albert Johansson, whatever's going on with him, it's going to be a tougher road for him to make the NHL coming off of a surgery and an injury. So I will we, I guess the question is, is not will he crack the lineup this season, but will we see him at all this season? You know, I think that, lost in our conversations about the additions to the blue line and, and the fact that we keep adding defensemen and whatnot throughout the entire off season was this injury. Um, it's, it's one thing if Edvinson was fully healthy and we had a whole conversation probably a few weeks ago already now where we, you know, kind of went back and forth about the, the, like you have to prove it -ness of this roster right and and how the the prospects are not just going to be given the keys to spots in the lineup they're going to have to prove it and why that's either good or bad or whatnot if you take the injury into account if you didn't add as many players on the blue line and you were just like you know what when Edvinson's ready he'll come back and fill that role. You would be asking a rookie coming off of a major injury to then get slotted off the lineup immediately after coming back from a major injury and presumably get like legitimate playing time and somewhere in the bottom four at the NHL level. That is a lot to ask. And I think that that's why this team has not been shy about adding a ton of players on the defense because I, I think that that's a lot to just put on like a, a young Simon Edmondson. And so he's another guy where I fully expect him to play at the NHL level at some point this year. But when he comes back from injury, he's absolutely going to GR. That's not even a conversation. He's, he's going to play there. He'll work his way back. Once they feel like he's back to full strength, then they will start assessing him as a player and determine how far away he is from cracking the lineup at the NHL level. Now, obviously, again, same conversation with Soderblom. If an injury happens at the NHL level, if and, and probably when an injury happens at the NHL level, then then certainly I, I would be shocked if anybody else, assuming it happens when, when Edvinson's healthy, I'd be shocked if anybody else was the first call. Um, but I, I think that that, this is why like that, that's just a, that would be an insane nine month stretch for him 
to to if they just like didn't sure up the blue line and were just like, yeah, you know, when you're ready, you'll be slotted in there. Like that's that's a lot to ask of a rookie. So um as far as when to expect him, I'm not expecting him in a winged wheel before the new year. Uh I would say that, but I think that again, this all comes down to performance. Like, it, you know, we can talk about when we think they're going to be ready and, and all this stuff surrounding the situation. But at the end of the day, if he's crushing it down there and, and has worked on and improved on the specifics that the front office and the player development development team have asked him to improve on, then the, I don't think they're in love with like guaranteeing Olimata and and Petrie and uh, maybe that's kind of it. But like, I, I don't think they're in love with like this seven men on the decor have to be here for all 82 games and no one else can have a chance of cracking this lineup because this is the best decor ever. Like, I, I think if, if room is created, they will find it. Yeah, and I don't, I, you maybe think that some of the acquisitions Eisenman made was because he recognized that Edvinson wasn't going to be a hundred percent ready by the time the season was. Cause you're right. You know, and th this team doesn't, this team can't win a championship without guys like Edvinson being hits, you know, like you yeah. have got to hit on these draft picks, but injuries you can't control. And so I I'm right there with you, Scotty. I don't think you see Edvinson if anything until the new year, cause he's going to take time to like, while well, he's rehabbing it now, but he's going to get back up to game speed. So he's yeah. going to be going to Grand Rapids. He's got to, like you said, prove that he's crushing it down there. I think long-term, Edmondson is absolutely a top four forward on this team. Like, second line at worst, top For line sure. at best. You know, we all had the the dream of him and Cider playing <laughs> right next to each other because they're so big, although Cider's found some chemistry with Wolman. So now you're thinking, okay, well, maybe we can have him play on line number two, which would be pretty damn good, too. So you get excited over that prospect, but it's going to, unfortunately, because injuries do happen. I don't think if this injury happens, or I think if this injury doesn't happen, I think there he does have a shot of starting with the team coming out of training camp. And maybe, I don't know if the acquisitions Eisenman makes changes at all because he's so ardently like these players got to prove it. We're not going to give him a roster spot. So maybe it wouldn't have changed at all. Um, but I think that it would have been a real, a real threat because we saw – from and we because we agreed coming out of preseason last year, Scotty, that he didn't look ready. Yeah, he came up and played nine games later or nine games later in the season, and he looked significantly better. Still, a couple things to work on, it wasn't perfect. Had some games where he looked off, some games where he looked great. Um, so if in that span he improved that much, who knows how much better he's going to be, how much better he's going to get in his time in Grand Rapids whenever he's finally healthy enough and okay to play hockey again. So I don't think we're that far off from seeing a healthy Edvinson play in the NHL, but the injury and the rehab definitely set that timeline back maybe at least a half a season. Um, but will again, will re it remains to be seen. I, I fo fully believe Edvinson is going to crush it at the NHL whenever he gets here. Like I said, he's like Soderblom where he's like on the cusp, but he just needs to, you know, get healthy. That's yeah, really what it comes I, down to. Well, yeah, for sure, and and I, I, uh, we're all still very excited about him, and it's, it's been a a weird kind of windy road to get here. But I, again, like I, I don't think that if Edvinson is is crushing down in GR and has done everything they've asked him to do and improved in everything they've asked him to, I, I don't think that this team is going to be like you know what. We're just going to leave everything the way it is. Sorry, we just, like, don't have a spot for you. We really, really want to guarantee, like, Oli Mata or Jeff Petrie uh, a, a spot in the lineup every night. Like, I, I just I, – I don't see that happening. So, uh, if he performs, there will be a spot for him. But I, I can almost assure you that the reason that there's a, an increase and an uptick in depth back there is is, I mean, dare I say solely – but, uh, you know, in large part due to this Edmondson injury. Absolutely. Um, so I believe we have planned a crossover for uh, the Wednesday episode for you guys. Um, but anything can happen. So we'll, 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 you know, not spoil it yet because we, you know, who knows, things could happen between now and then. But we are planning a crossover with another Atlantic Division team uh, coming up here 
as a season preview begins with the teams, that is. Um, but Scotty, do you have any final thoughts? Um, we ball. We do ball. We'll be back with a new episode on Wednesday. So stay tuned to Lockdown Red Wings. Same time, same place, your team, every day. Every day. Every day.